Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. On today's show, we'll check in with outgoing Parks and Recreation Director, Nancy Carroll. My guest today is Parks and Recreation Director Nancy Carroll. Nancy has recently announced that she'll be leaving the City of Ames for another job. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Susan. It's nice to be here. So this will be your last um, appearance here on This Week in Ames. We thank you so much for spending some time with us. We thought yeah. we'd take a, a little bit of time to sort of look back on your career. It's been long and mm -hmm. very successful. Maybe you would have an opportunity to share with us some of those success stories over the years. Great. Well, first of all, thank you, Susan. And, and yeah, it's really hard. You know, when we talk about this is my last last something which is mm -hmm. your show today but there's a lot of lasts here this this month of January and it's really hard um, I want to be you know really up front with the community of Ames that I love my job and I have loved it for 28 years and it wasn't um, a decision that I made lightly because I still had a lot of energy for the job and um, was really looking forward to a lot of the, the exciting projects that are on the horizon and in addition, I love the people I work with, both internally in the city of Ames, as well as the residents of Ames. So it was a tough decision. And maybe we can talk at the end of the show a little about well, maybe when I'm transitioning to, but, but it wasn't a decision made lightly. I'm really going to miss this, this organization and the community and doing what I get to do every day. You mentioned uh, nearly 28 years here at the city of Ames. Mm -hmm. As you look back over those years, obviously a lot of changes in this community. Uh, a lot of things have happened, um, very positive changes mm -hmm. in the community with, with tremendous community support. That's right, spot on. And I think that's where you always have to start. And that starts, you know, with the, the, the city leadership of Steve Shanker. You know, as the city manager, he hired me when I was in my early 30s. And I was just so thankful that he did. And he was taking a risk because I hadn't been a director and I was, I, you know, nervous stepping into a larger um, arena. And with his leadership and the expectations where we always started from day one was what do the residents want? What do our customers want? And so we always tried to keep that at the, the forefront of our, our thought process each and every day. And with that being said, when we first, um, when I first began then back in 1991, um, that's what we started to do. We started to canvas the community. We had a lot of focus groups. We did surveys. And we really just tried to get calibrated around what were the most important needs in the, not only the recreation side of the, the, the department, but also on the, the park side. And um, it's then a journey that took us really through the last few years of, of uh, facility improvements and adding parkland and um, you know just always having a vision of where you're trying to go and so I think that's what we really started back in the early 90s and it's been a great roadmap being driven by what the residents of Ames do or don't want. You mentioned being director in 1991 but that wasn't your um, first job that you came to Ames. Mm -hmm. You were uh, you have background in aquatics. Yeah th that's right well I was born and raised in Ames so of course I always had a passion for this community in particular um, I went to University of Northern Iowa, and then after I graduated there, I was the first um, little recreation director for the community of New Hampton, Iowa, and it was a town of 4,000 people. I was there about three years, and then uh, I went to Waverly for a couple years, and then Ames is where I did come back in 1985 to be the aquatic supervisor. And those, of course, are the days when we still had, of course, gateway pool out at our administrative office, carpool, um, municipal pool, and um, so that's kind of where I started. And then I was promoted to recreation superintendent in 1987. And then I did that until 1991 when the, the other director left for another job. And then there was a national recruitment. And then again, I was fortunate enough that Steve chose me to, to spearhead the, organiz or the department at that point. Now, and we should mention one of the, uh, the huge success stories of the last few years has been the development of the Furman Aquatic Center, also one of the projects that received um, a huge outpouring of community support, an yeah. identified need, I'm sure, through, those, through, through that research you've done. Right. That's right. So, so you, spot on again. Um, in 1991, when we started really getting out and talking to people and trying to get calibrated, or what were the next you know, 15 to 20 years really going to look like? Because it takes a long time to make significant changes with infrastructure, if you will, of facility development or park development. And so we started to understand pretty early on that a lot of the facilities we had were um, hand-me-downs. And that might sound a little strange, but, but a lot of the facilities that we, that we were operating back then were things that other people 
um, either didn't want any more and they'd sold to the city or we had gone out and pursued them. So a couple of quick examples, the, the pools. You know, carpool was awesome. I learned to swim there when I was a, a, a small child, but yet it was starting to age. And we were also back in the early 90s starting to see a different transition to these aquatic centers. Um, Gateway Pool, you know, it also served as the, the Ames Golf and Country Club. It was built in the, the early 40s. Um, the um, Homewood Golf Course, it's awesome and it, it's, it's a fabulous facility, but it was showing some age too. It had been um, owned privately and the city then had acquired it, so it needed some it's a little TLC, if you will. So just a lot of our facilities needed some oomph, and we needed to kind of turn a corner to get some new facilities. The Ames ISU Ice Arena, um, that was built because volunteers saw a need, and they, they met that need in the late 70s. But yet the compressors were from an ice arena that had closed in Chicago, and the flooring underneath the ice didn't have a subfloor heating system, so the ice was, was starting to, to heave. So that was another huge need. So again, kind of secondhand, a lot of used major facilities that we really started to see we needed to get after. So how did you address those needs and those issues? Well, we started to go out again. We've always tried to keep the residents engaged in the conversation. And a lot of the leadership was through, back then in the mid-90s, through the Parks and Recreation Commission. And specifically, they started to go out and say, well, will you pass a bond issue? Or will you support, you know, your property taxes going up? Because when we start talking about a new ice arena, an aquatic center, you know, those cost, as you know, millions of dollars. So you have to make sure people are going to vote yes, or at least 60% plus are going to vote yes. So the Parks and Recreation Commission went out and did a great job in the mid-90s to really canvas the community. In addition, we always have been big in this community, and this is leadership that starts with the mayor and the city council and administration at Iowa State University and administration and the school board. Those three within, this, within Ames, Iowa have always had a collaborative spirit, and that has just been paramount to the success we've, we've realized for the residents because let's just use the Ames ISU Ice Arena. We needed a new one, and yet if the city would try to do one on their own and the university would have tried to do one on their own, neither of us would have done it very well because they're a very expensive operation. But doing it together, and literally we co-own the ice arena with the university, we start with public programming at 5 a.m. until about 9 a.m. The university comes in with some programs during the day. Ames or, um, Hockey comes in for Iowa State early evening. Ames Minor Hockey, and then college students again until 2 a.m. That really makes an efficient operation when you're doing that. So we, we then again could sell that to the public, and they voted yes. We got a new beautiful, it's now 11 years old, ice arena. Um, the same moving forward then for Ada Hayden. That was another huge addition to this community. And it started because a lot of environmentalists understood, and in particular from Iowa State University, that water quality in that lake was everything to our secondary water supply during droughts. And so with, again, Iowa State um, expertise and um, being able to educate the public about that. Ames residents, as you well know, they're, they're, they want to be proactive and they want to manage resources well. That bond issue was tremendously successful. I think it was in the 80 percent tile that we passed that. And we also went out and got a um, $1.5 million Vision Iowa grant that was huge to help kind of lower some of the, the cost to the Ames resident. So, um, that's, that's kind of, again, what we started to do. But you can kind of hear the red thread and all of that. Know the need, try to explain what the needs are with facts to our residents, and, and they, they step up and they support things. And um, I guess lastly would be the Aquatic Center. Mm -hmm. Another demonstration, you know, though carpool was awesome in its day, people started to want something different. And when Nevada opened their new family aquatic center, a lot, of, I mean, Several thousand people were leaving Ames each summer, and you might have been one with your children, taking them to Nevada. And that still is why Don Furman and Ruth Furman decided fundamentally that they wanted to contribute $2 million to make sure that bond issue did was successful and did get passed. Because Don Furman, he told me this personally, he said, Nancy, I could not understand how, and he said mothers, were driving their children to another community for an amenity that we should provide our own residents. And that was what he wanted to do, is to help make that happen. And 
as you and, know, another and what successful. A, and what a great partnership. I think, yeah. that, again, that, that thread that you talk about is the community support and the partnerships mm -hmm. because it was built on Iowa State property. That's right. And the infusion, again, of, of private money. You know, another one just recently um, is the, the Gita Winokur. You know, $1.7 $1 .7 million bequest that's unrestricted to the Department of Parks and Recreation. And again, Gita loved the environment. She was a naturalist. Um, and, and so now the new director and the Parks and Recreation Commission, the ultimately the city council and the residents will get to figure out how to, to wisely invest that, that tremendous gift. And I, I use that as another example of um, relationships and people seeing a need and having vision. That was Giedel again and wanting to make a difference in this community long term. You know, there's been conversation that there could be um, a private property owner in far west Ames that has an 80 acre parcel that we might be able to, to connect Giedel's bequest with, with that land. That's still going to take few more months to unfold, so I won't be in the position of, of influence in that per se, but I know, again, a lot of good people are involved and, and, and that money will still be, be put to wise use. So in your career, you've seen the success of many projects and mm -hmm. have really uh, bolstered this community and adding to the amenities, keeping people uh, here to enjoy those things and, right. and, and, and allowing them not to have to travel mm -hmm. miles to go for something else. Uh, as you move into the next chapter of your life, it seems like a lot of those skills that you've developed here will help you in your next step. Yeah, I sure hope so, and that, that is my goal, you know, to make sure and, and keep relationships at the, at the forefront. Um, and, 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 you know, and we didn't talk about it, but I really do want to speak to you just quickly that, that we talked a lot about the capital improvements that we made, but we also, within Parks and Recreation, and this is attributed to the 22 full-time employees we have that have been a part of this operation that I've been here this 28 years, and several hundred seasonal employees that we we have every year that actually are the ones that deliver the programs to the people at the frontline level and we have some of the best people doing that job day in and day out so that when you go to a t-ball class or a fitness class um, whatever it might be swimming lessons it's done with with again customer driven wanting to deliver a quality product. So I, I, I want to make sure we touch upon that because I have been blessed to be encircled with great people doing great stuff for all of that time. It was huge. So now transitioning. I, I have a tagline and it's it, in my mind lots of times it's great results through great relationships. And I just believe that if you have that as kind of a mantra, you will have good things happen because it's all usually based out of what someone's relationship and their working dynamics. And then if you have a vision and you try to go somewhere, you put people around that, hopefully good things will happen. And my next position will be uh, with the ministry. I've been going to the same church since 1989. And we have an outreach called Build International. And the essence of what I'll be trying to do is help fund um, higher education degrees. And we're within the states we do it and then also globally. And as an example, the paradigm of when people used to, to try to come to seminaries and they would leave their, their home, um, we, try to, we take it to them where they're at. And so we go through the local church throughout the, throughout the world. And we can do it pretty economically, but yet it still costs about $5,000 to get someone a degree. But a bachelor's, um, a master's, a doctorate in their local church, we go to them. But one of my roles as director of fund development will be trying to find resources because, you know, in some of the, the uh, um, India in particular, they don't have $5,000 for a four-year degree. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to help through foundations and, and donors to try to match that need. So a little bit different, but I'm excited about it and looking forward to how God can use me in that realm. And will you stay here in Ames then? Yes, I'm, I'm very excited about that. Um, Build International is located out of our church, which is out on Oakwood Road in Ames. So though I'll have maybe some travel, uh, which I'm excited about, that'll be a new venture for me. Generally speaking, I'll be here and, and uh, trying to work that that new new role and responsibility. So wrapping up one chapter in your life, opening the page for an, another chapter, uh, using a lot of the same skills, it really seems like a, a great opportunity for you. Yeah, well, thank you. And, and again, it, it didn't come um, easy to make the decision, as you well know. And I want to thank, you know, the residents of Ames, first and foremost, for their support over all these years. Um, and, and there have been so many people that have been instrumental in making the success that we've realized um, within the community of Ames. So thank you to a lot of you folks that have worked with me directly.
correctly and been provided wise counsel and insight. You know, I, I also want to speak to that we have had the best leadership in this in this community. People don't know it, but we, for again, the 28 years I've been here, it started for me personally with the city manager. Steve has been just instrumental to me. There's no one I would have wanted to work for or with more than Steve Shanker. He is awesome, and his leadership and wisdom in my life professionally has been just uh, just amazing and then it then it goes of course to the mayors and the city councils that we've had and the parks and recreation commissions um, the leadership at those levels is why we get good stuff to happen and then of course the residents support it so and then again all the 500 employees that the city of Ames as you well know they're awesome people doing awesome stuff so it's it's that whole package so I'm very appreciative to so many people and and again it's hard to leave but I do look forward to my new ventures and and I'll be here so I'll be watching and I'm excited for how Ames is going to continue to do great stuff moving forward. Well, Nancy, we're glad you had a chance to stop by. I know you've got a lot on your plate right now as you finish some things up. So thank you so much for your years of service to the residents of thank Ames. Thank you. It's been my pleasure, and thank you, residents of Ames and everyone else. Well, it's still awfully cold out, but it's not too soon to start thinking about the Furman Aquatic Center. You can get season passes and discounted season passes right now. 10% discount for early purchase, and if you renew your 2012 season pass before May 15th, you'll get a 20% discount. Also remember, as we get into early February, budget hearings are being held. You want to check the schedule on our website. That's at cityofames.org. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week for This Week in Ames.